I've only got this hairband in so you can't see my frizzy hair and also my Voom is like the equivalent of that Homer Simpson meme. You know the one where he's like got all the fat behind his body. <laughs> it looks okay on the camera but below there's like stuff I need to sort out. <laughs> Hello everyone and today I thought I'd talk to you a bit about how picking your modules works at university for you know your second and third year or maybe your first year depending on your course and it can be quite confusing and also I'm picking my module choices right now and I know that it can be quite confusing for uni students so I want to simplify the process and also tell you about the modules I'm picking. So at Nottingham and if you see me looking down it's just because my computer's here and I'm looking at it there's a website we have called My Nottingham and you can search a list of all the modules that were available for the past year, which may be subject to change when module choice opens, but it's generally the same. The way modules and credits work at most universities is that you need to take 120 credits in a year and generally across two semesters, the autumn and the spring, it should be a 60-60 split or a 70-50 split or a 65-55 split depending on what modules you're taking you shouldn't have more than 70 credits in one term and 50 credits in the other most unis won't let you if you try and do that at Nottingham all our modules tend to either be 20 or 10 credits I've never seen a module that's not 20 or 10 credits except for dissertations which are like 40 so it's quite easy to do the maths to work this out. I think at my boyfriend's uni, which is Warwick, it's like 15 and 7.5 credits or something, which is a bit strange. So I've got the list of modules and what I want to do is I want to pick modules for my third year that comply to those rules and I also need to check that I've done the prerequisite modules for each one and that I'm allowed to take each module. Most universities will give information about prerequisites and co-requisite modules on maybe your Moodle page or whatever the virtual learning thing you have. One thing you want to make sure, now I'm in my third year so this doesn't really apply to me, but if you're still not sure Perhaps if you're doing a maths degree or some other degree, you're not quite sure what area of maths or philosophy or English you want to specialise in. You want to be sure that you're not closing yourself off to other possible future options. So, for example, you may pick some modules in second year and then get to third year and think, I really wanted to do this module, but I didn't do the prerequisite in second year. So you definitely want to look at any module diagrams your university provides. And if you're in second year going into third or third year going into fourth, you should also have a look, I think, at the fourth year modules or the third year modules. So you've got an idea of things that might be there in the future that you want to take. So hopefully that all makes sense. And with that, I will just discuss what modules I'm taking. And yeah. So normally within this 120 credit system that UK unis have is that 100 credits, if you're doing a single honours degree like I am, single honours maths, 100 credits must be of maths. And they must be maths at my level, so level two if I'm in year two. So this gives me an extra 20 credits that I can use to spend on something else that I might find interesting. The thing that I'd like to spend my extra 20 credits on is a philosophy module because as you might know from previous videos, I do like my philosophy. Some math students or other students might use this opportunity to take a language module for beginners and then learn some German or French or whatever. <laughs> but as long as the module doesn't say it's only for philosophy students or only for English students, then you should be alright to take it, you just have to double check. So for my extra 20 credits philosophy module, I originally wanted to take the third year philosophy of science module because I'd taken the second year one and I'd really enjoyed it. But unfortunately, this would not be allowed with the other maths modules I wanted to take as I would be having too many credits in the spring term if I did that. So I was quite disappointed about that, but can't do anything about it. That's just how it is. So instead, I'm thinking of taking the second year philosophy module, which is called Being, Becoming and Reality. It sounds really interesting and it's quite good. And most philosophy modules are quite good. They don't require any previous knowledge and it's just great to discuss topics as long as you feel comfortable with writing essays and things, then chances are they'll be a good choice. So I've gone on this Being, Becoming and Reality page and the stuff it talks about sounds really interesting. If I'm not sure, I can always message the lecturer or send them an email or something. And I can also look at how many lectures that I'll have in the week and seminars and things and how it's assessed as well and for this module in particular it's assessed by 
a 2000 word essay and a one and a half hour exam, which I'm fine with. So now I've got to take note that I've got 20 credits in the autumn term and the rest of the modules I've chosen are maths ones and I'm just going to whiz through them. So for the autumn term I've already got my 20 credit philosophy module so I want to get around 40 more credits in maths modules. And I have chosen advanced quantum theory <laughs> And I've also chosen a project that we can do and it's going to be on special relativity which I'm really excited to do, it sounds really cool. Then for the spring term this leaves me with 60 credits to use up in the spring term on maths modules only. So I've chosen electromagnetism, relativity and classical and quantum dynamics. This past year I took a module in scientific computation and I didn't enjoy it at all so I'm going to stay clear of the third year scientific computation module. I would have liked to have done the graph theory and game theory modules but they're only 10 credits each and I would have had to have dropped one of my mathematical physics modules, I didn't want to do that so yeah. <laughs> so I find with Nottingham that there's a really good choice of modules and it's often that I, I feel annoyed that I can't take all the modules because I just want to learn everything but I suppose it's better than not having enough choice. And I hope that kind of explained how to choose your modules. And now I think sometime in the next week or the week after that, module enrolment will be open and then we can actually type in our modules and then it will be checked to see that that's all right. But one thing that can happen is if you're taking modules from different departments is that there could be a module clash and this happened to me. And basically what happened was that I had two hours of the maths and two hours of philosophy at the same time and I went to the philosophy ones because the maths ones were lecture captured. It wasn't too bad but I wouldn't really want to do it again. And yeah, that's basically it. And that's how I pick my modules and those are the modules I'm taking next year. I'm really excited to study them. Mathematical physics ones sound great. <laughs> and I hope I explained that well enough for you. Let me know if you're a bit confused and I'll try and clarify in the comments because it can be really confusing. You just got to remember that it's just got to add up to 120 and it's got to be a 60-60 or 70-50 split. And yeah, if you're taking any cool modules and stuff, let me know <laughs> and I'll see you soon. Bye!